Oh, I was not expecting to get this the day after Memorial Day. You can tell it's Memorial Day. I got myself my red, white, and blue. Well, that's not quite white, but uh, it looked a little bit more like that in the bottle. Oh, well, America. So, yes, I got a lot of knives here. I got um, a package here from Blade HQ. I got one here from Knife Center, a knife that I've been waiting for days shy of a whole year after I pre-ordered the dang thing. Uh, and then I got um, some of these guys here. I think these are Tucson's, and I honestly don't remember <laughs> what that might or might not be. But it uh, feels like a knife box, and it's um, addressed to me. So let's go ahead and do that. Today, I'm not quite sure why, but I feel like uh, pulling out the, um, the uh, Six Leaf uh, SL07 here. A little slip joint one. This one's an M390, but they also do it in D2. Let's start with this... Uh, uh, one from Knife Center here. Sorry, it does have some uh, sensitive address information there. So, there we go. I got it at least opened up a little bit here. Hey, these Kershaw boxes definitely look different than uh, when I saw them many, many, many years ago. They were all silver and had uh, American flags and stuff like that all over them. But, okay. Come on out, buddy. Alright, it is a Lucha. So their, uh, their Bali Song or Butterfly Knife. Ooh, I got a little, little tiny box of snacks, or package of snacks in here. Nice. Okay, yeah, this guy is, uh, it's a large one. Hey, it feels super nice, too. Uh, latch is, uh, different than I was expecting it to, uh, be. Um, I guess a little bit more used to the, uh, the latch being on, um, yeah, the other side there. But, hey, there we are. That's, uh, this one is the one in 20 CV steel. Rather than 14 C 28 N. Feels nice and uh, smooth. When I do play with it like that, uh, maybe not quite as much, but still very, very fluid movement. Uh, let's see if I can find where the hell this is. I think I have it in this uh, Lynch Northwest thing here. Yeah, I actually have some um, replacement bearings that are supposed to be better for those. Uh, Bought them just a little bit after I actually put my money down for that. Uh, hell, if I actually remember exactly who made those. Uh, it might have been Flytanium or something like that. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be fun to have uh, another butterfly knife that I can uh, play around with. And this one is definitely larger than um, the, um, well, the Pacific Cutlery uh, pre-benchmade kind of uh thing that i got uh as well as um the uh the baron sons one which i don't even know if i've really uh shared on the channel or not it's nothing really great to write home about but uh yeah here we go there's um a, uh, a few boxes here from uh blade hq well these kind of spoil it don't they <laughs> I got the uh, the Boker Mini Tech Tool one and three. Why? Because they were twenty dollars and like twenty two. Uh, yeah, this was I believe for um, uh, Blade HQ's uh, Memorial Day sale. And we got that uh, corrosion resistant paper, or at least I'm assuming it is, because it has been for uh, other companies in the past there. Yeah, we got the uh, the zebra wood on there. It has an interesting uh, chatoyance kind of a shimmery nature to it. But it has quite large um, milling on there, and I see a lot of voids. Hey, what are you gonna do? It's twenty bucks. Uh, but yeah, this is a cute little tool. These things are in twelve C twenty seven steel. Uh, really high mirror polish. Well, yeah, pretty close to it. Really high polish going on on these things. Uh, 
I wanted something kind of like a Swiss Army knife. Um, you know, a little SD classic, but uh, something just a little bit different. And then this one is going to be pretty darn similar. Yep, same blade we got going on there, but this one has a pair of scissors on it as well. Ah, it's got the one uh, quite a bit like the uh, scissors you get on the uh, Victorinox multi-tools, not the, um, the Swiss Army knives themselves, but uh, yeah, it works out all right. I don't necessarily know why they called it the Tech Tool 3. I thought it was the 2, because it had two tools on it, but nah, I don't know. Yeah, neat little things. Blade stocks on these... Uh, Blades are quite a bit thicker than uh, a standard Swiss Army knife, though. That's kind of interesting. Let's move some of that packing material out of the way. Now, this is the Kaiser. This is the uh, the Vanguard V3, uh, I guess, known as Vigor. Um, this is a, a Kim Ning design here. Uh, this was on a super closeout sale. Got kind of their uh, their older packaging stuff in here. Yeah, kind of interesting. You still do get uh, all the same goodies. You just had the uh, the older packaging that was uh, maybe a little bit more concise, but flimsy. Right. And yeah, we got this little guy right here. Come on, buddy. There we go. Hey. Looks open pretty nicely. This is in uh, N690 steel. Uh, obviously, this is uh, one of their uh, older, pretty much um, discontinued models. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, a Vanguard. <laughs> this, um, very, very inexpensive. I think the green version here uh, went for like 35 bucks, which... Um, Hey, for a knife from a uh, pretty reputable company with a uh, decent steel like N690 and stuff like that, it sounded like a pretty darn good deal. We got G10 here. Looks like we do have uh, standoff things, so you can swap that pocket clip over. Looks a little funky, but uh, eh, it's raised up, but that's the way that pocket clip is designed. Looks like it'll probably be decently easy to uh, get in and out of the pocket. It is not deep carry, so that's something to uh, keep in mind. It also doesn't necessarily feel like it's on um, bearings, which also don't particularly care all that much. I can still probably end up getting the action a little bit more uh, fluid than that. Feels decently glassy, I suppose you could say, but uh, yeah, no, really nice and thin. We got, uh, well, it's kind of a, a high saber grind there, but it is a hollow ground as well. So, yeah, it's super nice and thin. That's pretty cool. Thought I felt a roll on there, but I suppose I did not. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty sweet pickup for like 35 bucks. Let's see, what is this thing? Because uh, this is basically going to be a mystery to me. Well, it's in a black box. Um, maybe a Sativian? Oh, no, 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 no. This was a... Uh... Wow, I didn't think this one was going to come anywhere near this quickly. This was uh, something I got off of AliExpress. Um, it's a, a Jufel or Jufelet knife. Um, and I thought it looked rather... Um, yeah, I thought it looked rather unique, but uh, unfortunately, I think I'm wrong in that. Um, and this might be a, a copy of another knife. If it is, I'm not exactly familiar with what it is, but I think I've seen something that looks a little bit similar to that on uh, Instagram afterwards. But anyway, this has um, some black dyed, uh, pretty loose thread micarta going on there. It's using K110 steel. If you're not familiar with that, it's uh, basically a name brand of D2 from uh, Bowler, the same people who do M390. And, well, N690 for that matter, since uh, I just had that over here. Uh, 
Well, yeah, what kind of intrigued me about it, at least, is the fact that it's a... Uh, you got a standard flipper, uh, front flipper, if I can actually do any of these things. There we go. And then the uh, the hole, uh, the detent on this thing, really could use some work for uh, trying to deploy it in some of these, uh, these other ways. It's uh, fairly light there, but... Um, yeah, it seems to work out all right. A little stone wash going on on it. I think I also saw this one recently come up on Amazon as a Jaya Brother or something like that. I don't know. I'm not familiar with uh, But obviously it's just a uh, another company that's um, relabeling things. Uh, right. Seems to happen. Free Tiger does that and uh, Smothers as well. And, uh, okay, here is... This one here, make sure I don't cut any of the boxes along with any of this crap. Nope, totally did. <laughs> Wasn't really avoidable, but uh, ooh, that one's got a different box. So does that one. All right. Well then, let's start with the one in the, uh, the normal box here. Okay, this is a Mazwan Mokhtar. Yeah, this thing looks pretty sweet. This is the TS-344. You can see, again, we got that little um, G10 swirl kind of thing that uh, I just recently taken a look at here. This has a stupid high hollow grind going on on the blade. That's pretty sweet, all things considered there. So yeah, that keeps it super thin for a long time. It's not, um, because of that, it's not quite as thin behind the edge. Hey, they do that anyway with uh, pretty much any of their hollow grinds. Uh, as you can see, this one doesn't have a, a flipper tab on it. It just basically has that uh, groove there. But hey, you can um, easily uh, reverse flick that thing. The ergonomics seem to work pretty good on this thing here. Let me get some of the schmoo off of it yeah this is uh obviously a titanium subframe lock uh we got carbon fiber and uh, those little g10 bolstery things hey that one actually i like the figuring on that one a little bit more than the backside. yeah i suppose that makes sense um and yeah they're not attached or uh you know dovetailed uh like they do in some of their other ones it just gives it a little bit uh different look to it but, yeah, this also has a really aggressive satin finish to it, which is interesting. I haven't really seen them use a, uh, a belt uh, that coarse for doing some of them here in the past. But well, that's all right. It is in D2. It has uh, quite a few of their models that the, uh, the recent moment has uh, been using. But, um, yeah, I like this thing. Uh, this also has one of the uh, the fully extended um, uh, back spacers, I guess you would. Yeah, uh, works out all right. Uh, I definitely like that, as long as uh, you don't end up with any blade wrap or anything going on there. Which, uh, yeah, this thing doesn't look like it's anywhere near any of that. So we are definitely good to go on that front. Yeah, this is a, yeah, another one of those, what I would call a modified, I don't know, Warnfoot, Sheep's Cliff, that sort of thing. Um, does kind of clip there at the point a little bit just to uh, get it a little bit more pokey. Otherwise, I would just call it a, a straight up Sheep's Foot kind of thing. Yeah, I like this thing quite a bit. It, uh, it definitely looked like an interesting one. We still have um, Mazwan's ball style. Um, clips going on here uh this one seems to be a little bit more gradual than uh just the straight point there so hopefully that'll be a little bit uh, nicer for um getting in and out of the pocket because some of his are uh have been a little bit of a challenge recently but uh yeah let's continue to move on Knock, knock, coming in. Oh, okay. 
This is a long karambit, which means the other one probably is as well. What did I do with my... Uh... Nah, it's over here. Yeah, we got even more of that um, G10 stuff. I suppose it's good that uh, I actually like it. Whoa, that thing flew the heck out there. That's crazy. All right. Yeah, this one is the uh, TS-373. It's also in D2. Stonewashed. So that's pretty cool. Uh does have a pocket clip to uh, go along with it. This one actually looks like it has a uh, more or less a uh, Mazwan Mokhtar style ball sort of thing going on there. This one has these uh, large thumb lugs that, um, uh, let's see if I can find the Dracula to uh, kind of give that a little bit of context. Ah, here we are. Yeah. If any of y'all are uh, familiar with this guy here, uh, they also do it in Micarta and D2 as well. But uh, yeah, same kind of a uh, thumb stud going on there. It seems like uh, they may have uh, shaved a layer or two of the uh, the knurling off of it just to make it a little bit smaller, but still basically looks to be the, uh, the same piece that it was uh, manufactured from there. This thing uh, feels super, super nice and comfortable back here. You get that nice palm swell from the uh, the G10 and everything, but you are really far away from the blade at that point. But, I mean, if you are going to actually use that as um, more or less a, a, a tactical weapon kind of thing rather than an everyday carry, then uh, you kind of do want that to have that extra reach. Yeah, this thing is uh, ground quite nicely, nice and thin. This is probably not one that uh, you would want to uh, take on on uh, most um, uh, fixed angle sharpeners. Uh, just the uh, the curve is probably going to be a little bit too much. You can technically do it, I think, with like a Lansky and maybe the KME if you buy the uh, the very specialty rounded. Um, kind of stones or something like that for them, but it's really a specialty sort of thing. But these things are really easy to sharpen up on a, uh, on a belt system. I got a really acute tip on that too. It's uh, not crazy reinforced, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, that's what the, uh, the Spyderco uh, civilian and the matriarch do, uh, and that uh, works out quite well for them. They, uh, they do have a variant of this model where they do have the, uh, the highly polished and um, flash anodized um, titanium scales there for them. And uh, hey, it looks like this is a, a nested uh, liner lock. It is not a uh, titanium uh, subframe lock like I uh, initially thought. That doesn't necessarily bother me. It, uh, it definitely makes a, a large whack when it comes out. That is for darn sure. But, yeah, we also have uh, quite a bit up there. So, um, yeah, you have a, a decent point there with a couple of uh, jumps if you really wanted to uh, get up there to uh, use it for some uh, more utility sort of stuff. And, um, yeah, sharpening choil. It's a, it's a gradual one, but it seems to end oh, right around here. So you got a few sharpenings in you before um, any of that might become a problem there. So that looks pretty neat. All right, this one's probably going to be uh, another karambit from uh, Wong, but this one's going to be black. Yeah. So this one has blacking. Uh, looks like you can uh, front flip this one out here. It's a uh, very, very much different angle going on with the uh, the blade in general here. The uh, the arch is uh, it's a little bit more steep on this, but the blade comes much farther up, as you can see there. This one's a, a little bit more um, simple in um, in kind of design philosophy there, with the uh, the flatness going on with the uh, the titanium. Yeah, that is a very aggressive um, hawk bill going on for that. 
But this one does feel really nice if I want to uh, hammer grip it without using the ring. Or, of course, you can, of course, use that. And you got a nice amount of jimping going on there. Different thumb studs on these things. They don't have any knurling going on there. But, yeah, I don't really have uh, too much of a problem with that. Uh, what might cause you some trouble, though, is that uh, front flipper does come out quite a ways. So, yeah, doing that uh, front flip motion didn't really get to me. But, however, I was holding it and uh, doing that front flip motion, or, yeah, the thumb stud motion, I do actually hit my finger with it. And uh, there's no lock bar access on this one. Obviously, it's got those uh, little things there. This is... Um, also a uh, steel liner uh, on the inside there. Very uh, understated pocket clip going on, which is pretty cool. Let's see. And yeah, it's not too bad. Obviously, almost nothing will fully fit my uh, finger that way. But hey, uh, you also don't really um, use karambits that way. At least not that I'm very familiar with. Um, and this one, uh, the, the overgrind comes out, uh, far past the plunge grind. This is, uh, pretty interesting. It's, uh, it's taller than it too. So that makes it probably a little bit easier for doing some of that sharpening there. But of course the, uh, the thumb stud is in the blade path, whereas this one, uh, very slightly, maybe it is. So this one might be just a little bit more difficult to sharpen. Uh, without um, kind of nicking this on a stone or whatever else you might have. So, um, you know, this and uh, some other knives, I've uh, I've ended up removing the, uh, the thumb studs for sharpening, and then I'll put them back on. But, uh, yeah, we do have uh, titanium on both of these, but they are liner locks instead of uh, frame locks. It's kind of interesting. I think probably between the two of them... Um, this uh, 373 for me is more comfortable. This is a 370, by the way. And yep, both of them are in D2. But um, yeah, this is a little bit more slimline, but this one really feels a lot more ergonomically friendly to me in uh, a lot of different ways. Interesting. Yeah, the action isn't um, absolutely amazing on this one right out of the box, but hey, I've had that happen with um, uh, a lot of theirs that have the uh, the coating on the blades there. And you can generally get them uh, quite a bit better by uh, taking apart and cleaning them up and uh, throwing your own premium lube of choice in there. Uh, recently, mine's been KPO, but hey, nano oil and uh, some other stuff is on the market as well. And uh, all of that stuff does a pretty darn good job as well. So. Right, might as well uh, close up that little uh, slip joint. But yeah, I got a whole bunch of new toys. We got the Kercha Lucha in uh, 20 CV. Uh, I actually got a little annoyed. Um, this one took forever to come out. Uh, and then, you know, once they, uh, they had that announced and, uh, was up for pre-order and I pre-ordered it, they came out with like three waves of new knives and no mention of this. And then just, uh, a couple of weeks ago, they did have a mention, but it wasn't this one. It was, uh, <laughs> it, it still had the 20 CV blade, but they replaced the, uh, the handles with, uh, carbon fiber and titanium or something like that but it was like well over twice the price and i was um a little miffed at that but uh hey this thing did end up um kind of i don't know shadow dropping or it wasn't really a uh, flagship model that they were um super enthused about because they had the uh the other version of it there but, uh, yeah also can't really flip super well underneath uh the whole camera. I don't have enough room for uh, doing a lot of that sort of stuff. I'm also not really a proficient flipper. I can do a couple of things like a latch drop and things like that, which, um, like I said, I don't really have the room to be able to uh, demonstrate under the camera in this particular situation. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's neat and big. 
And then we have the uh, the two little Boker guys that I opened up, the uh, the Tech Tool one and three. Still curious exactly why they called this the three instead of the two. Made me think that there was like a uh, a pen, like a needle pen kind of thing or something in there. I don't know. We got the uh, the Kaiser V3 uh, Vigor from uh, Kimning. This is a tiny little guy, you know, a little three finger grip, but hey, very affordable. And then we have this uh, Jufalé knife, which um, maybe I'm wrong, and this is um, a uh, is more of an original design, but. I guess knowing this company, I don't. Uh, it probably was taken from something else, and if that's the case, then uh, I do at least a little bit regret purchasing it. But I don't know. We'll see how it works out. And then for Tucson, we got the uh, the TS three forty something rather three forty four from Maswan Mokhtar. Not a front flipper, not a standard flipper, but uh, still a really big, useful knife with a crazy hollow grind on there. Uh, and then I suppose I'll do those in number order. We got the TS370 from Wong. It's a fairly thin, compact uh, kind of uh, karambit going on here. And then we have the uh, the TS373, which um, seems to have a little bit smaller blade, a little bit shorter handle, but uh, a lot thicker. And I think the ergonomics on it work out just a little bit better. But yeah, so that was uh, all sorts of fun. I love having a uh, a huge knife day <laughs> instead of just uh, having one or two trickle in. I do, of course, still have some more stuff coming in. Um, more two suns. Uh, I got uh, a few more of those kind of uh, on their way. Uh, I have a new. Um, whoops. Yeah. Uh, that uh, the. Uh, six leaf. I have a new one of those coming in. I think it's the uh, SL17. Don't know what happened to uh, models 14, 15, and 16. Uh, they just haven't been released yet. Uh, I also have a couple of knives from Mossenary, uh, which I don't really know all that much about uh, company wise, but uh, I did find that they do have a, a YouTube page that uh, I think unless something's changed r rather recently, they have less subscribers than I do. Um, but yeah, I got a couple of those coming in. Those are also rattlesnake designed. Uh, let's see this morning. I had just purchased, uh, along with that six leaf one, um, the, uh, Spyderco native in M4. I'm hoping I'm trying to give uh, M4 from Spyderco another chance with this one. And uh, I really missed having a native. Um, I had one that a, a friend purchased for me a long time ago. And um, it had been around for a long, long time. And then I uh, ended up, uh, its pocket clip got caught on something. I think I was at a movie theater or something like that at the time. Couldn't find it afterwards. So it just kind of disappeared and I got sad, but never really replaced it. Um, I guess fun story on that one. Uh, we, at, at the time I was still working at the, uh, the, the cutlery shop that I did in uh, California and, um, yeah, we still sold those things for a hundred bucks. Um, they were American made, so they were using S 30 V instead of uh, VG 10. So that was definitely why they were more expensive at the time than the, uh, the Delica and the Endura made sense. Uh, but they struck up a deal with Walmart for probably not a huge amount of time to offer those things. And they were under 50 bucks, but they were the same exact thing. Same S 30 V steel came out of the same factory. Um, and a friend of mine, um, a uh, lady friend of mine actually uh, purchased it for me because she was randomly there and uh, kind of thought of me. So that was kind of nice and uh, really enjoyed that. But that wasn't the native five. I think that was a native four. And the reason I say that is because the, um, the, uh, the newer ones use the, uh, the three holes in the clip. Uh, 
Uh, obviously, the uh, the PM2 here isn't going to uh, really do the uh, the best job at uh, kind of uh, describing that, but it does have three, but it had, uh, you know, that whole kind of thing going on in the middle of it. Uh, maybe like the native, or not the native, but... Oh, you know what? I do have a native cheese. I probably, uh... If I'm lucky, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know exactly what I did with it. It's not in my drawers here at the moment. Well, in my, uh, yeah. You know what I mean. Not in my pants. But, um, yeah, so uh, the one that I had uh, still used the, um, the kind of slotted barrel screw. There was only one. And uh, you basically tighten it up with a nickel, I think, is uh, what they ended up uh, designing it for. Or other uh, foreign forms of uh, coin currency and stuff like that. Um, so hopefully the clip will work just a little bit better on this one in general. But yeah, we'll see. I will, uh, get it in and, uh, try to do some cut testing and hopefully I can get a little bit more than 55 cuts that I ended up getting out of my, um, out of my, that, uh, the Maddox 2, uh, and M4 here. And that was, um, with the factory edge. And then of course I did, uh, resharpen it to, uh, 15 degrees, which you can see definitely took the bevels up quite a bit and same exact amount of cuts the second time there. So yeah, once I'm able to uh, repeat something after, um, changing the, uh, the factory edge that may or may not have, uh, some kind of burnt edges and stuff like that, it's pretty safe to say that's how the knife is going to uh, act. So Hopefully we get a little bit better with that native. Um, yeah, I should have it in a couple of days or something like that. I will probably end up throwing that into some of my um, size comparison things. Uh, if I remember right, it's probably relatively similar um, in size to the uh, the Benchmade Bugout. It'll be a little taller, I do believe. And definitely wider because this thing is really thin. But hey, there you go. Well, this was a uh, fun little openings and first impressions and uh yeah at this point i suppose i should probably finish up my work day and then i can uh get started on uh probably putting some edges on these things obviously they um they're all sorts of decently sharp already probably to uh, varying degrees i guess i can figure that out on another video here but uh yeah all right as always i appreciate y'all for watching and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day yo america